This is a comprehensive video on how I did my J-1 waiver as a J-1 teacher with 212 e-roll to green card. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. <music> This is Emery. I'm used to be a J1 teacher from the Philippines with 212 e rule, now a green card holder through my US citizen husband here in Central Florida, USA. I am going to share to you my timeline from the very beginning of our submission of papers all the way till I get my green card. I started as a J1 teacher in the year 2019 and I got my green card in the year 2023. It is very important to see your timeline and your status as a J-1 teacher. We got married in April of 2021. We got married in a church. It's very important that way. You can also ask for your pastor's letter to vouch how real your relationship is. I submitted during my third year as a J-1 teacher. I am still in status. It is not advisable to do so, just like what I've heard from other Filipino immigration lawyers handling 212 year rule. Most of them advise in the year two or year four when you have your extension already the reason for that is you need at least two years to process to get your waiver and then have your green card i am not an immigration lawyer this is just my way of showing to you as a filipino who got my waiver through exceptional hardship now i have my green card you can visit our website powerfulcoupljourney.com on the statement of reasons, cover letters, other important tips on how we pass and were able to get our waiver through exceptional hardship. These are the forms that you have to submit in the USCIS and these are the forms you have to submit with the Department of State. My husband submitted the I-130 and I include the I-130A right after our wedding three weeks after that we got married in april 2021 three weeks after that my husband submitted already the i-130 it is not advisable though but it happened and we are successful to do so so this is just my way of showing to you and how i did it uscis received my paper may 17 of 2021 it took two years before it got approved it was approved May 10, 2023. I-130 is a petition for alien relative. I am the immediate relative of my husband, which is a spouse. That's why I got this I-130 and we know that it's gonna be taking so long. How did we know that? We always make sure to read the forms and the instructions through the USCIS.gov. The next I submitted the I-612, that is the waiver application through the USCIS. I submitted first week of June 2021. USCIS received my form June 21, 2021. I am going to show you my timeline and the exact tracking that we use. I use USCIS case tracker, that way I will always have to check from time to time, or even every day, my case status. I-612 was submitted in June 2021. It got approved August 1, 2023. But before that, we have plenty of RFEs or requests for evidence that we submitted through the USCIS. You could do it online or you can do it paper form, but most likely it's gonna be online that way it's easier for them to receive the case or the RFE then they're gonna respond immediately. My case was on hold with them March 21, 2022 because I didn't know that I have to submit the DS-335. Nobody's telling me about all the forms. I asked for an immigration lawyer in Orlando before but then he said that it's not going to work, it's not going to work in our case. Maybe because he has no clients when it comes to Filipino filing for a J-1 waiver. I understand that that's why we're compelled to do it ourselves or DIY. I waited 17 months 
from case on hold before it got approved in August 1, 2023. So right after it was on hold, I already had my papers ready because most likely the I-612 and the DS-335 statement of reason is the same. That's why we have here in our website our own statement of reasons. If you want to check it out, you can go there. If you want to talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, you could also have your schedule over here for us to let us know about the details and the forms we submitted and what are the strategies we did in order for us to really had the case approved. I did concurrent filing with the I-485 which is the EAD work permit I-765 and the travel document I-131. I have lots of videos showing you how I did that so please check that out that way you'll know the step-by-step -step process. This one right here is my timeline and showing you what is the case tracker and how it was submitted to the USCIS and Department of State and it was approved. I submitted my I-765 second week of June 2021. They receive my form June 29, 2021. I got my biometrics with I-485 which is connected with the I-765 November 6th of 2021. I got a combo card which means the I-765 work permit is granted together with a travel document I-131 and we call it combo card. Card was delivered to me May 9 of 2022. Again, I did concurrent filing I-485, I-765, and I-131. This year, 2024, they had separate payments for that. They no longer allow you to have free submission or free filing when it comes to I-765. So please check USCIS.gov filing fees. That way you know how much you're going to be paying. This is how it looks like with my I-131. Case was received and seat notice was sent. With the I-485, this is very crucial. The reason for that is you are only given the chance to submit the I-485 if you are married to a U.S. citizen or there are other circumstances that you have. I cannot vouch to any other things or any other submissions because I was not able to have that scenario. I am just here sharing to you how I did my I-485 because I'm married to my very humble and loving citizen spouse. Again, we did this together and this is our success. We are sharing to you how we did this one through our website, powerfulcouplejourney.com and I also have J1 Waiver Helping Hands group that is telling about the timeline and how to process their forms. I sent my I-485 June of 2021 that is like second week of june they received my form june 29 2021 and there are a lot of requests for evidences there but what i'm so happy about is my biometrics that is showing that they really are working with my case i have requests for initial evidences right here because they're saying that i submitted my forms with the i-130 i-485 sooner and I should have waited. That's why it's not advisable really to submit your I-485 immediately because you're going to have a lot of statement and a lot of evidence is showing that your marriage is really legitimate and the reason why you submitted your papers right away. So be strategic about it. That's why I'm always selling it to our group and to you here that you have to really know your timeline, know your status, and there are a lot of things that you have to consider prior to submitting your I-485, even though you are married to your U.S. citizen spouse. They had asked another evidence, which is my medical. The reason why I didn't submit my medical is this. Medical, the I-693 is only valid for two years. And with our 212E, which is a waiver, it takes more than a year in order for it to get approved. So I was compelled not to submit my medical yet. That way, I don't have to spend another dime. In November 21, 2023, my case was approved. 
this is one of my happiest day ever. And I'm not gonna lie, I really cried. I really cried because all of those hardships, all of those agony of waiting for more than two years have been granted by our Lord. And I'm so thankful that my husband was there helping me out. He did all of the words and he even says it's battle of semantics. But I did all the wordings and all of the paragraphs. What he did was he kind of polished it. He's very good when it comes to like that. So it's a team effort. November 30, 2023, the card was delivered to me and I became a permanent resident in the United States of America. When it comes to my DS335, this is my timeline. And again, my case was on hold. I didn't know that I had to submit my DS335 during that time. That's why I have a case on hold with the USCIS. But they said, and I've had listened to a lot of lawyers in YouTube that says when your case is on hold, there's gonna be a big chance that they see a favorable ones to give you a waiver with a USCIS. However, they really have to get the DS-3035, which is a waiver or favorable recommendation given to you by the Department of State. So this is my timeline. Again, you can visit powerfulcoupljourney.com, our website. That way you could see my statement of reasons and filled with evidences that you wanted to take or you wanted to take a chance if you are compelled to do it yourself. I also had my advisory opinion. I should have done this ahead of time but what I've noticed is the advisory opinion and the DS335 has the same case number. You will have seven digits case number that you're gonna use and you can track your case right here with the Department of State and I'm gonna put the links down and the comment section at the same time in the description that way you will have to know what are the real size that we went in order for us to process our waiver. So this is our comprehensive video right here. Please visit most of our videos about how we did it DIY and what are the different forms we submitted if you are a J1 teacher with 212 e rule just like me and if you wanted to file the case or forms by yourself then please do visit powerfulcoupljourney.com and this will really help you when it comes to your processing we are here for you and we're always gonna pray that you will have your waiver and you will not serve that 212e rule because it's really heartbreaking to know that you have to serve that one with our home country the Philippines because it is the law however we're so thankful that we have the waiver and I am really praying that you will have that one just like what I did I'm now enjoying my life here in the US together with my husband and we are here to help you again visit powerfulcoupljourney.com and we are here to help you when it comes to your step-by-step -step process and don't forget to reach out with J1 Waiver Helping Hands just agree with our rules and you will be accepted immediately thank you so much and good bless everyone